Although he may not look the part, this peaceful looking young man was one of the greatest fighters to ever come out of Hong Kong. He was legendary Wing Chun master Ip Man's go-to guy whenever a rival school issued a challenge. He was the one who provided the primary instruction to a young Bruce Lee and was his coach in challenge matches. And he was the king of BAMO, or challenge matches, taking on all comers, any time, any place. Participating in, by some estimates, over 100 such encounters without a single loss. He was known as the man who did his talking with his hands, and his name was Wang Song Leo. Malaysia, 40 minutes from the nation's capital city of Kuala Lumpur, lies the town of Seremban, population 372,917. It is within Seremban that a special event is taking place. It is a gathering of students of Wong Sung Leung, a man described by Bruce Lee's first student, Jesse Glover, as the best Wing Chun man in the world. Although Wong has been dead for over 17 years, people from all over the world have gathered in Saramban to share knowledge and techniques that were passed on to them directly from the late martial arts master. People from all over the world, uh, Denmark, Canada, Australia, uh, Malaysia, Hong Kong. It's actually a very good event because it's very rare that we have a lot of uh, Wong Sun uh, lineage students getting all together. First ever, so I'm very pleased to be part of such a, uh, you know, uh, momentous uh, occasion. Fantastic. Presiding over this get-together is David Peterson, one of Wong Sung Leung's top students. Actually quite overwhelming to see this place so full of people that represent the legacy of that gentleman up there. None of us would be here, none of us would be doing what we're doing. We wouldn't have the friendships that we've already made and the ones that we will make over the next two days 
if it hadn't been for Sigal Wogzana and his efforts to take people like me and John and all the other presenters and help us and craft us and mentor us to where we are now is what it's all about. Had he not done that, had he not been the incredible man that he was, we'd have nothing to show you and you'd have nothing to practice. So really the, the true credit and why we are here is to celebrate Wong Tsun Lu. So first and most importantly, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for being here. He seemed to stress the uh, aggressive nature of, um, you know, Wing Chun, which is basically um, uh, attack and don't spend, uh, don't don't uh, let up, you know, uh, make sure you um, win the fight, make sure you, you know, uh, keep the uh, attacker at bay, at bay by launching attacks. Just shortly before I left um, Hong Kong was my last meeting with uh, Sifu and. I remember expressing my uh, concern that I would find it difficult to, um, um, to uh, train with more experienced people than I. I just had this impression that everybody else was more experienced you know, than I. And Wong thought about it for a few seconds and then he said, not to worry. Doesn't matter how more experienced or skilled these uh, people that uh, roll through, you know, meet with. Whatever happens, just attack. Just attack. Don't worry about the skill. Don't worry about your uh, you know, uh, lack of experience and skill. Just attack. And that made quite an impression on me. Yeah. It's very... Oh, never hold. Great fight. Hey, most of his fights, according to the eyewitnesses that are still alive to talk about it, said that they were over within two or three punches because he just went straight to the job, bang, 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 and it was over. In his experiences outside of Baymo, he had a couple of very close calls where he was attacked uh, for reasons because of other people, not because of himself. And uh, on one of those occasions, he was with a friend who had run up some pretty serious gambling debts and the mob, the local triad group that he borrowed the money from, came looking to collect their debt. And my Sifu was with him at the time, this particular guy. And when they came in, they came in with knives and sticks and steel bars and whatever else they could put their hands on. And under normal circumstances, my Sifu always told us if there's an attack by weapons, the best way to deal with it is to run away. He was a realist in that regard. He wouldn't teach people self-defense against weapons because his attitude was, I don't want my students to learn how to die. However, he always said that if it did happen, you need to fight like your life depends on it because it absolutely does. And so you have to go straight for the closest opponent, put him down, be aware of any weapons and get the hell out of there. So on this occasion, he had to put that thought process into a real life application because he had to protect his friend. If he had to run away, his friend, friend probably would have been beaten to death or worse. So. He did what he normally wouldn't do. He moved first and moved into the attackers because he wanted to cut them off from getting to his friend. In the process, he put a couple down straight away, but he was wearing the traditional Chinese minlap jacket that has the rolled up sleeves. And as he was moving in on the guy, one of the people in front of him, that fellow grabbed his arm and the sleeve covered his hand. So the guy had a good grip on his arm and dragged him in. And in the process, slashed downwards with a knife at the same time. Sifu luckily and instinctively brought his arm forward defensively and to the day he died he had a very visible scar in his forearm where the knife had passed down across his arm and there was a bit fine one between his eyes where the, the blade had come down and just missed cutting anything vital. He immediately dispatched that guy, grabbed his friend and started running. And when they got out into the street his friend ran one way and he ran the other way and they chased Sifu because he'd already put two or three of the guys on the ground. So again, using practical thinking, he ran into a crowded area, a place called Mil Gai or Temple Street in Hong Kong, which is like a nighttime market. And right in front of him was a 
uh, merchant selling knives of all kinds. And immediately as he's telling the story, everybody assumes he would have picked up the biggest knife in the place and started using it. Instead, he quickly scanned the display and he picked up a wooden chopping board. And he proceeded to turn around and as everybody else came and tried to slash or punch or kick, he would hit their arms and legs with the wooden chopping board. And he managed to hurt them enough that they backed off and he got away. Afterwards, when people said, how did you manage to do that? That's brilliant. That's fantastic Kung Fu. He said, that wasn't good Kung Fu. That was damn good luck. And then someone asked, why the wooden chopping board? Why didn't you pick up a blade? And his response to that was, if I picked up a blade and I killed any of those guys, we'd be having a talk in jail. And besides that, if I lost the blade, they would have used it on me. And I wouldn't be talking to you at all.